It is estimated that when William the Conqueror invaded England in 1066, he did so with an army of less than 10,000 men. So how did he manage to rule a kingdom the size of England? To control his new kingdom, William not only brought with him an army, but a new system of government first adopted abroad by Charlemagne in which land was allocated to each nobleman in return for taxes in peacetime and soldiers in war. To make this system work, William initially confiscated the estates of the defeated English lords, but this in turn led to more revolts and a cycle that continued for five years after the Battle of Hastings. To put down and prevent further rebellions, the Normans constructed Mott and Bailey castles and fortifications on an unprecedented scale, and William was able to govern England whilst living in Normandy for most of his reign. Historian Robert Lydiard remarks that to glance at the urban landscape of Norwich, Durham or Lincoln is to be forcibly reminded of the impact of the Norman invasion. As a result, the feudal system, as it became known, was introduced into England. In the medieval period, Southampton Castle occupied a position on the west face of the town wall towards the northern end. It is not known when the first phase of the Norman Castle was built, but it was probably in existence by 1100. The castle was originally of Mott and Bailey design with a shell keep at the top of the Mott or Mound situated close to what is now Lansdowne Hill. Reconstruction under Richard II converted the keep into a multi-turreted tower. There was considerable expenditure on the castle during the 13th century, some of which was for defensive works, but much on the domestic buildings. The Chapel of St. Nicholas, no longer standing but believed to have been on the site of the Juniper Berry public house, was re-roofed in 1253, the castle hall was remodelled with a stone vault and other domestic and sanitary facilities were added. Very little archaeology remains of the medieval castle today. The Norman castle wall with its finely finished ashlar buttresses is visible from the western shore. The guard robe tower or the toilet block which was constructed in the 13th century at the southwest corner of the castle was demolished in the 19th century but the channel itself has been excavated and can be seen next to the wall. The Bailey Wall still survives on the north of the site. It runs in a curve on the south side of Albion Place from the wall to Castle Lane. The parapets are supported on high arches formerly faced by battered earthen walls and ditches. The bases of the drum towers of the east postern gate can be seen at the entrance to Castle Lane. Traces of the castle hall and barrel vault can still be seen. The castle vault, built in about 1193 and entered from Castle Quay, is still intact, as is the castle water gate. Only the west wall of the castle continued to have a defensive role as part of the town wall circuit. There is little documentary evidence for repairs to the castle in the 15th century, and the last recorded expenditure was in 1518. The castle bailey became a dumping ground and the castle green and ditches were divided into smaller garden plots. In 1618 the entire castle site was sold by the crown. It is the absence of any stonework for the original keep that has raised questions about the type of castle that dominated the medieval town. Historians infer from the existing evidence, in particular the remaining part of the bailey wall and bank, that the medieval castle was of a grandeur that could be compared to Warwick Castle. Artists have also lent credibility to this description by portraying the castle in a favourable light. For example, if Philip Brannan, who moved to Southampton in 1844, is to be believed, the fortification was even taller than the spire of the nearby St. Michael's Church. One explanation is that later artists modelled their view of Southampton medieval castle on either the configuration or the perspective of the later castle folly, thus making their own work look more impressive. Paintings completed before the construction of the castle folly show a rectangular keep of more modest design. 
it was the use of gunpowder that led to the end of the castle as a defensive fortification because regardless of how thick the walls were built there was always a cannon big enough to breach them and therefore no ruler was entirely safe alongside gunpowder was the invention of the printing press which helped share new ideas about the feudal system and the divine right to rule together these inventions or discoveries heralded the transformation of society from the medieval to the modern southampton's medieval castle became obsolete and was used successively as the site for a windmill and as a banqueting hall until it was demolished altogether to make way as a residence for the Marquis of Lansdowne in 1805. This was demolished in 1818 and the mot subsequently lowered removing all trace of the medieval buildings or structures.